Alright, I'm back, and now we're on part three. So, part three. Let's start making more leeway. So, we take a look at this right here, and we see that we may need to do some alignment on the vertices. So, I'm just smoothing them around into a kind of rounded oval shape, which I think will assist the form, even though we can't see it right now just by seeing how the, the it's flexing um, with the subdivision set to active I have a somewhat general idea on what I'm about to see and I think that looks a little better now this one is going to need to be creased I'm just um, playing around here, so I'm just going to shift, um, crease that 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and see if that looks better. And no, it looks horrendous. So um, we'll just see if we can do something to relieve the amount of stress that's in this area. Nope. All we can do is select this edge, this edge, shift E 0.5, um, shift E negative 0.5, select all of these, shift E negative 1. And that'll do. Sorry. But it will. Now, from here, um, we want to begin working on these sides here. And our plan for attacking the bottom. So we'll select these front. Verts. I'm going to press E Z. And you know, it's all funny. Um, right now, I'm making a tutorial about modeling a PS3 controller when right now the PSN network is down. So I'm actually mad as hell at them. I ought to make a controller getting blended like I originally want to. But my computer is not letting me have that. Um, so with these, we're just going to line them up. It gets ugly in, um, subdivision mode sometimes when you're moving these. And I think after this part, I'm going to have to take a break for a moment to let my computer cool down. Yeah. It look maybe not horrible let's see now we're going to start working on it from the side hmm. we'll box select these and I'm not really, um, I'm trying to do it differently every time, so I'm just kind of um, 
making it up as I'm going now. So I'm sorry about the uh, lack of narration here, but it's a learning experience for us all. It's like having a driving instructor who's learning how at the same time as you. Except I, I know what I'm doing, I just don't have a plan yet. Like, I'll probably come into some problems, but problems are good. They teach you how to deal with stuff. I'm just trying to round off the bottom shape here that's, you know, characteristic of the PlayStation controllers. like these just not the two on the inside underneath that's who we got and we got a little bit of mayhem so let's drag these back under control and that's probably why I was looking a little weird um, there we go and we go back underneath and let's see we got this vert that we'll be using to guide our geometry up the side. Add those back together. Put these back together. quick to get out of control. Um, and we'll just keep manipulating them underneath just to keep them under control for now. Because if it gets too out of hand and starts to lose its form, we can always gently reshape it. So that's not terribly difficult. And we're in a position where we still have good control over um, the development. Now, um, the goal of watching me model model is more or less to see just, you know, like the idea behind it. Like, I don't know if y'all have come across like that thread on the web that's like about the pole, like the five inch pole and what it means for your mesh, basically um, having good topology is essential for animation and just basically having your mesh be efficient on the CPU while still not being super thick. So, you know, when you show your wires, you want your wires to show that you're a competent, you know, person that you know, places their verts in a 
a calm and a controlled manner with efficiency in mind, I guess, to show that um, you're capable of handling the management of, you know, large-scale assets because of your ability to keep them organized and within memory constraints. And so that's like my big thing is slow, making low render times. Like I've found that the render times can get out of hand if you don't keep an eye on it for some ridiculous things. Like I was reading in a book that the the same cube that takes four seconds to render with four, with eight verts can take like. 10 seconds with you know 86,000 look exactly the same and that kind of stuff it has happened to me as far as like renders but stuff similar to it like I'll be rendering and suddenly the compositor just isn't working it drives me crazy but I was hoping I was hoping I'd have a new computer for I started making tutorials again but Oh, it's a dream. In fact, I'm all tired. But I am going to finish. Because I want to jump on to my next part. And that me and my next goal um, in these videos. And that is human face modeling. I have been spending a lot of time learning that. And I thought it was near impossible, but I think I could give quite a few tips and pointers in that area that might make better modelers of us all. Modeling is one of my favorite aspects of uh, Blender. Seeing how intelligently you can, you know, put it together using vertices before you, you know, break a sweat or before it starts getting too dense to control. Like the way that we have it right here, um, I could go and make changes that are subtle, changes that are, that are you know, large scale and critical, and it would have minimal effect on, um, I could do minimal changes and make, um, maximum difference pretty much and that's like the goal here to be able to have everything to form nice animate nice be able to weight paint it with ease and finesse and you know weight paint is already a painful enough process don't want to make it worse with weird verts and strange geometry just merges those two. One, one, two, three. You know what? We'll subdivide this. One, two, three, four, F. F, one, two. Ta-da. One, two, three, four. Just a little bit of thinking and you will be able to get through this. We'll just start releasing some of the slack on it. But yeah, you know, if y'all are digging these videos I'm making about modeling, uh, yeah, just let me know. I'd be more happy to show y'all more techniques on it. I just think it's not talked about enough as far as, you know, on the web. Like, I'm starting to get the attention it wants now, but 
Marlin's definitely where it's at. try what does that mean for a model well it means I pretty much don't want any damn edge loops there that's about it like um, a lot of people worry about tries this controller's not good dancing it's not doing nothing it's gonna sit there and look pretty when we're done so some sometimes in modeling if the ends justify the means then I guess it's all right So you guys have uh, read the um, Linda cookbook, right, about the 2.50 materials. It's an excellent read. Um, I do wish there was more books that talked about material nodes. Like, it's such a mystery to me. Um, not so much now, but it was. And uh, we're actually going to do a little teeny bit of it just for the shading of this um, apparatus now I'm just looking at it giving it the look over and just making changes as I see fit turning back on my mirror And I think we're actually doing very good. So for this part right here, we're just going to drag that these two up like so. And select these two, these two close them up, select these two, these two, close them up, add a loop cut, select our new four, close those up. Alright, we look at our controller and it is looking actually pretty good. Um, Y'all would normally be using a lot more reference images in it. Um, then I am um, like I've actually modeled a lot of these uh, practicing up for this so I just don't feel like going and getting any more pictures and I definitely don't feel like recording this one again um, so I'm trying to do it in pieces so um, the audio doesn't splice because that fight tutorial I did I really wanted to do a part to part two for that where it was going to explain you know a little more about how I accomplished the effect that I was going after but it just circumstances with the the original recorded file would not allow me such all right now underneath it um, we are going to need to move that over and that's E alright and we're going to select this and merge it last Um, I'm 
just holding Alt and selecting it. Um, press E, scale it. Um, I'm going to bring it in. E, Y, S, Y. All right. And we're just going to go ahead and just clear up some of these. So we're going to push two back. And now we've reduced our row by two in exchange for looping it. So let's hope we don't have any loop cuts going up and down it, um, which I don't think we will. Um, these two right here, they're pretty small. Let's push those back and reduce our line by two. And that's an interesting little way to deal with verts. I've noticed that I've been able to use consistently now we're going to W subdivide put it right here go up here Alright, and we're going to add another uh, subdivide. And to look under the bottom, you hold control and press 7. Sorry about that if I didn't mention that earlier. Um, but that is what you do. And that is a pretty handy shortcut too. Um, let's reduce our stack by two more. Just so we can... Um, start getting this closed up without horrible trouble. F. Alright. Alright. Um, we're just going to select all these on the top. H and hide them. And now we got it to where we got need it. Alright, I'll just drag that out. Close this set of four. Alright, these two shall connect. These shall connect. One, two, three. We'll add one loop there. Close that set of four. And we are starting to get some closure to our controller. Now underneath, I do know that we need to add some sort of um, label. So S, Y, 0, Shift E, Shift E on this one too, uh, Shift E, this one, Shift E, these two S, X, 0, and Here we'll just drag these up and from here shift E we're gonna turn that to one and maybe a little bit beyond it, just this whole area possibly. Give me a sec. Uh, just gotta relax the vert so it makes a happy shape. I did mention that this is a workflow tutorial, right? Yeah, so that means I don't have to try very hard at explaining. Um, we're just gonna.
Shift E, one. Uh, just select those, drag them down. All right, now, I don't know about you, but I am starting to feel pretty fond of this controller. So, I'm going to save that as number eight in this video. <laughs>